continue. Hi, my name is Tomilola Koko Adeyemo. I'm a storyteller and a romance author, and I am here for my author's chat with Okada Books. Okay, so I think that success is very relative and it's heavily based on the parameters that you set for yourself as a person or as an individual or, or whatever. So I would say success for me would be being able to achieve the things that I have set for myself, you know, certain goals, things I want to be able to achieve in my life as a writer, an all-round individual, a big sister and um, a daughter and a friend. So yeah, that's what I think success means. So I think that, um, first things first, I have an amazing, amazing following. Um, I mean, I don't think that they're like a lot of people, right? But they are so dedicated, they are amazing, and they're like really loyal, so that really helps. I don't think that I did anything in particular to like get those guys, because a lot of times I get DMs, oh my God. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I have DMs from people who just say, oh my God, I love this, I love that, I've been reading silently for a while and everything. So I think that's what it is, first things first. Also, I think, you know, I don't know that I did anything in particular, but over the years I've tried to be consistent and I'm pretty badass at what I do. Not to sound cocky, but Sammy this work die. So that's actually an interesting question to ask because I've actually explored other genres. I currently have a book called, um, it's a rom-com, um, A Very Giddy Christmas, right? And it's not, um, it's not a smutty romance I currently write, right? So, but I've explored other forms of writing and if I could do anything outside romance, I really, really love humor, gosh. I am I'm an incredibly funny person <laughs> and I like to consume funny things, right? So I'll definitely like to write satire. I have already done that. I've written films. Um, I have a made-for-TV film called Double Wahala that is just plain humor and a satire. So that's definitely something I'd like to really just write if it's not romance. I think it's interesting when people say, oh, <laughs> you're infusing cultural language when you go on full on speaking like your African language and everything because um, uh, yeah, like the culture isn't just one thing. It's not just one way you ramble by and dance to butter, right? Ooh, it's rhyming there. So, <laughs> but for Queen of the Fields, I wanted to tell that particular story because I'm very big, very big on Yoruba spirituality. I'm obsessed with Yoruba history. Um, and um, I'm always reading about it. I'm always digging stuff up. I'm always reading about, you know, the primordial Irumoles, the Orishas. Um, I'm always wanting to learn about the ones we don't talk about. You know, like we talk about Ogun Shong, Oh yeah, and the rest of them. But you know, like we have so many ones we never talk about. Like there's um, Kori, there's Earring Lair, there's Orishaoko, all those ones. I wanted to explore that, and then I wanted to do a lot of what if. Good storytelling is really based on what if, right? So what if an Orisha um, reincarnated? What if somebody from the 1800s? came to now. We have the Vampire Diaries and the originals and all these foreign shows where they explore things like this, but we never really do it here. So that was just me wanting to do that. And I write pretty decent Yoruba and I speak Yoruba fluently, so I'm always going to talk about my culture, so yeah. I think it may largely have to do with the fact that we're very disconnected from our history. Because as a Yoruba woman, the more I read about history, the more I, I learn about our history, I realize that Yoruba women are historically like um, independent and you know strong and they have their own thing and they're very liberated, right? So I think that um, a lot of people is because we, we're not aware of our history and you know what Yoruba women have done. And in a lot of places, you know, it's also a very um, um, patriarchal society. Interestingly, I've never received criticism of the sort, of any sort actually. I mean, not something criticizing or why are you talking about um, steamy scenes or, or whatever. It's more like, um, I mean, when people give opinions, it's more about like my storytelling, which is exactly why we're here, right? So I, I always work off that, no matter how ash it may come across as sometimes. But you know, no, I actually get commendable. Um, I get people comment me, like I've had, men say oh my wife and i love <laughs> we love your romance and everything i've had married women come to my gym and be like okay you can't share this but when my husband is coming home i read your work and you know <laughs> and i've had yeah i'm always very happy like these babies won't make themselves so you know let's get it on
like Marvin Gaye, let's, let's get it on. So yeah, I, I don't think so. I think contrary to what collectively as a society we look like, we are actually very expressive when it comes to, you know, feelings and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, no, I don't get criticism or any form of whatever. People are actually very, very open and I guess people, I'm very open about what I write. So I guess if it's not your cup of tea, you just don't, you don't touch it. That's what it is. I don't have a personal life. That's what it is. Um, something always gives. Um, a few years ago, I was reading uh, Shonda Rhimes' Year of Years and she said it there, like people think, oh, it's on synergy thing you do and it's so small, but something always has to give, right? And for me, it's like my personal life, like it suffers a lot for that. So um, yeah, that's how I do it. I Sometimes I walk around the clock to the next day, like I don't sleep till 5 a.m. Then I wake up after a few hours and then I try again and go all over again. So um, I remember there was a time I was shooting um, a documentary and at the same time I was doing stuff like on the island and I was writing the Harris's play thing and I was leaving the studio at midnight almost midnight and then going back the next day and continuing so yeah it's not exactly I don't think there is anyone who has like a, a blueprint for this thing something just eventually suffers and in, in this case it's like my personal life I am a both person but I particularly love TV these days um, I think Netflix made that easier because it just throws everything out there at once so I used to like movies alone before because when I was much younger, because I didn't have patience. But now I have patience in abundance. I'm currently watching um, uh, The Office. It's my second favorite sitcom of all time. The first is Friends. Um, I watched Downton Abbey as well. I watched the entire series, the entire show and the film after. I love humor. I love um, comedies. I love satires. Um, and I absolutely love, love watching romance. I love watching romance. The most challenging story I've had to tell would be the Harris's play thing and that was because it was a character, the lead male was not the character I thought I was ever going to write. I gave in to my readers, like the one I called, tell me, give us acting, give us Nelson. I mean, I went and started and my friend Ali Man, Jesus, she almost died. I was always ending her voice, I was like, Ali, I can't write again, I sound like 15 minutes voice notes. She's she was sending like 30 minutes voice note back and say, oh, don't worry dear, you do it, I trust you. <laughs> and. Oh my gosh, I remember I yanked off about eight or ten chapters towards the end because it was just nonsense that I'd written and I had to tell myself that truth and I remember I leave my reddit and said, mm, sorry, it's not giving. <laughs> Usually when I'm about, I'm going to write a character in a series, I already play with them in previous, no matter how little it may seem, I play with them in previous um, books or something, but I never did that for acting because I never was on the writing, so that was quite challenging and then it was a very emotional book, you know, this is the guy that is a bad guy, like he's done really bad things and I needed to get into his head to see why you know what made him tick and some characters come to you easy some just evade and play hide and seek with you right and for Arctic I had to go back to the 80s the 90s the early 2000s and tap into that emotional side and you know I tapped into my own emotional whatever as well and it was quite difficult in that sense but it came out well people liked it people saw what I was trying to do and I think that's that's what matters Okay, my creative process, I drink coffee and then I start writing. <laughs> but I do a lot of backstory work. Um, this is actually do a deck. I have boards on my Pinterest for everything I tell. And I do a deck sometimes and I put pictures of what I think my characters will look like. Something the closest to them. Which is a very great way to look at shirtless men and really sexy dark skinned women because I think that skin women rule the world. So yeah, that's usually what it is. But I do a lot, like an insane amount of work before I start actually, and that, that helps. And um, after I'm done writing, I tear it apart as much as I can. Sometimes I remove chapters, then I send it to Alima, who is my beta reader. I really trust her process. Um, Alima and I have worked together before, and um, my teacher has taught her, so I really trust her process for storytelling. Sometimes I run ideas by my mentor, um, Chris, and um, he gives me pointers and everything. Then after then it goes to the editor and you know we just put it together. It's an ebook. I'm not a um, paperback author yet, so you know that's just the process for that. I'm currently reading so many things. I'm currently reading a book about um Iromales, um Rishas, um in Yoruba land. Um, it has illustration, it's so cute, <laughs> so pretty, I can't remember the name right now. I'm currently reading The History of the Yorubas, a book I think was originally written in late 1800s and published in 1920 or something. I'm currently reading, write, uh, reading um, a romance by my favorite romance author, Pam Godwin. It's called um, Sea of Rain. 
Um, yeah, those are the three things I think. I'm, and I'm always, I'm currently, I'm always reading Money in Devotion. MFM. <laughs> There's also that. I'm a Christian. Ah, ah. Shocking, but I write about sex. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, my top three romance authors are um, Pam Godwin. She's an American author. Um, she's amazing. She writes beautiful dark romances. She's an amazing storyteller. Like she makes <laughs> things that are not okay, okay. She just messes with your mind. Um, that's about it. But I also respect Sally Kenneth Dadze's work. Sally is my friend. Um, she's a Nigerian author. She's not necessarily romance, so to speak. But Sally's writing has influenced me um, in the past. And the way Pam, like I read Pam and I want to write like Pam. And I, the first author I think I read and there was a character who was removing her pants and it just felt very like relatable. I don't know if that makes sense. Somebody was getting undressed after the day and I think that's one of the biggest powers of being a good storyteller. Like when you do something as minute or something minor rather and it's so relatable and I think yeah because Sally is an amazing amazing author. Um, I don't know I don't I think that's that's about it but um, yeah I love Sefi Atta. She's not a romance author actually but our writing has influenced me, so I think that's why I'm just going to throw it in there. And I respect the fatal chick. Um, I respect what this word does with our community as well. So yeah, um, I think people say this thing so cocky. <laughs> like I'm so successful now. I want to tell you how to be successful, <laughs> but nah, I don't. I think consistency. That's what your guys that went ahead of us told us. Consistency. Keep writing. Even if I, if you think you're terrible, the writing process is hard. Like it's, I'm just going to put his eye up there, like with, you know, performing a surgery, because you're tearing things apart, you're cutting, you're joining and stuff, right? And people don't stand up that process enough. Um, and the more you see life, the more your writing gets better, right? When I said dealing with health issues, my writing became better because I was tapping into darker you know side of me more painful side of me right so i think consistency is key i'll say that i got better because i kept writing right um i have teachers who told me the truth um my mentor chris Hedero, is an amazing storyteller you can't tell me nothing and um he was also taught by amaka igwe who is one of the best things to happen to nigeria ever she's like a natural resource or something so um i read i listen to him i watch good things. I watch bad things to know how not to write bad things and I, I don't read bad things too because I just can't get past page one of a book that is poorly written. So consistency, listening to other people, actually taking in other people's works, paying attention um, and staying away from pretentious art. All those people that feel like they're doing something deep. When you feel like you're doing something deep, you're not doing something deep. It's your audience that will tell you if it's deep. It's not you that will tell them. That was very important to me because I'd been, I said blogging fiction, I think in 2013 or thereabouts. I'd been writing, blogging anything since 2011. 360 Nobs gave me my first platform. Shout out to Oye, Aki Dende, and Noboligwe, and um, Tony Suarez. They gave me my first platform to write. And I said writing something called Grifos Chronicles. And this was in 2011, way before I went for NYS. I assure you that people who have been following me since then. That's 11 years ago, man. And, um, I, I just live for 10 people, you know. When I started going to people's neighborhoods, like to people's houses to drop this thing off, it was because I didn't have money to pay for Uber, right? And my brother just said, you know what, let's spoil my car and we'll go. And I was very sick, I felt sick that day. By the time I got back home, I was taking in the back to my brother's car, right? And I saw that people like, actually like, um, appreciated me actually showing up. And people wanted to take photos as well. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is so good, this is so nice. Um, it's because I fuck with the, the support. I genuinely, like I tell people, I write it down all the time. Like I genuinely respect the support. I genuinely appreciate it. I genuinely see it. But you know, another way you can also say it to people is to give them something. It wasn't a lot, you know, I hope to do more. Maybe like opera, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car or build houses for these people. But you know, it, it was important to me to do that, to say thank you for the support and everything. And I really, really hope people feel that. I hope to do way more, God willing, I will. So thank you guys. Thank you for always spending your money on me. Um, actually, I see myself as one of the biggest romance authors in the world, actually, globally acclaimed. Um, I see myself as one of the best people to ever do this. Um, 
my pen game is actually fire. I put in the work, I do what I'm supposed to do, I don't play with God, I do everything that is needed, right? Um, I believe that I put a lot of good things out there into the universe. So I believe that, yeah, in five years, that's what I think that I will be as a romance author. Absolutely, yes. Okay, I know Okadabus and I have a love and hate relationship. Sometimes I just, what's wrong with you people in emails? <laughs> a lot of times I'm acting normal. They probably think I have mental health issues. Um, Okadabus can, they just, sometimes want to kill you but i say it all the time as well in emails and even on calls when i talk to okada books you know the okada books team i think that what they started with ophili started when i got on okada books in 2016 as an author um ophili called me you know ophili was calling everybody <laughs> i think he had called sally and sally i told him to dm me or something you know he was calling everyone and nobody was doing what he was doing you know at the time you know he was calling people he was an author himself he understood that space and what needed to be done. And people, you know, like there was this huge gap there. Literary space in Nigeria is very, it's not easy. It's not for the faint of art, right? And all of us cannot get publishers to publish for us. Even right now, romance publishing space, how many people are publishing romance paperback, right? So, and this guy just comes and says, you know what, I'll give you 70%, you take your 70% and I'll take 30% and I'll put you out there. And I'll, I'll confess, you know, I had a following of some sort in the blogosphere, but this platform gave me I mean, I remember one time in 2016, I was in my house and I was getting um, reports for my sales and I was in China, South Africa. You know, like, it's an amazing, amazing thing they've done. I think that they've created a space for authors. I think that, yes, Okada Book still has a long way to go, you know, but, you know, it's done an amazing... You have other people coming up wanting to try the Okada Books model, right? Because they did it and it worked. So, you know, I think, I think it's amazing the work they've done. I think it's commendable. I hope you know, bigger, greater things for them. Imagine Okada Books being the platform through which you get a huge movie deal, for instance. So yeah, pick up the Okada Books team. Send me cake and car, Okada Books. And money. So hi guys, that was my author's chat with Okada Books. Um, I hope you guys had fun. If you watched to the end of the video, um, because this might actually just come past your tea and I'd be like, who, who is this one? So in case you just, you know, were patient enough to watch till the end. Thank you very much. Anyway, catch you on Late Night Show, one of those white guys, soon.